Hello, my name is Tyler Carter, and today I'll be talking about developmental tolerance. <clears throat> so what is self-tolerance? Uh, the dictionary definition of self-tolerance is the physiological state that exists in a developing organism when its immune system has proceeded far enough in the process of self-recognition to lose the capacity to attack and destroy its own bodily constituents. To sum that up, it is saying that self-tolerance is achieved when the host body's immune system has been trained to the point where it will no longer attack itself. Uh, <clears throat> the body uses many ways to train the immune system. Uh, train, quote-unquote train, really. Uh, what? And we'll get into this. <clears throat> so, how is self-tolerance created? A large part of the creation of self-tolerance is negative selection, and negative selection is any process that rids a repertoire of autoreactive clones and is responsible for central tolerance. So the most common form of negative selection would be clonal deletion. <clears throat> now clonal deletion occurs in high or er, in the wake of high affinity T cell receptor interactions. So if a T cell receptor gives off a like a high self peptide signal interaction, it is a indicator that that T cell that specific T cell could be an autoreactive cell. So you don't want that to escape the thymus. <clears throat> So to ensure that this cell never leaves the thymus, never enters the body so that it can attack, it, uh, apoptos it undergoes or goes through apoptosis, which is controlled cell death. So negative selection can occur in the thymus, medulla, and cortex, but you would typically see uh, mature or immature T cells go into the thymus to become mature T cells. Macrophages, B cells, dendritic cells, and medullary thymic epithelial cells all mediate negative selection. So any of these cells can uh, can, so be, can select T cells to undergo apoptosis or whatnot. <clears throat> Here's a very interesting fact about the immune system is that strong T cell receptor signals lead to death in immature T cells, but those same signals lead to activation in mature T cells, which is a very conflicting, <clears throat> which is very conflicting because if immature T cells receive, emit these, emit these signals, emit these signals, then <clears throat> they die. But if mature T cells emit them, then it's, it's great. That's how you. That's how you know you, they need to be activated. And this area is still a large subject of investigation. The importance of medullary thymic epithelial cells. They play a very important role in self tolerance. They express a transcription factor called AIR, which is autoimmune regulator, and that allows them to express, process, and present proteins that are only spe found in specific organs, such as insulin. So this relationship between these two is used to screen developing T cells <clears throat> get rid of autoreactive cells that attack these specific proteins. So the body, so autoimmune regulator is used to introduce certain proteins to developing T cells. And this is very important because that way the body can build up – or that way the immune system can understand whether or not these T cells are going to react to these proteins when they are released from the thymus. <clears throat> Other math methods used to form self-tolerance. There's clonal arrest, and that is when autoreactive T cells are pre just prevented from maturing. They never mature. There's clonal energy, and that is when these cells are inactivated, so they can't perform any immune functions. There's clonal editing. This one's very interesting. It's the the cells are given multiple chances to rearrange a T cell receptor alpha gene to make them less autoreactive. So regulatory T cells are very important in the autoimmune response as well because they suppress autoreactive immune responses. So T regulatory cells can inhibit the immune system or immune cells by releasing cytokines, which would be interleukin-10 and transcription growth factor beta. 
<clears throat> T regulatory cells can also kill T cells directly, which is more than enough to stop their immune responses. Okay, so self tolerance in B cells. B cells are actually very more sensitive to induction of self tolerance than our T cells. And they have three possible modes of action that they use to deal with autoreactive B cells. So clonal deletion, which we've already talked about, would be the, these B cells that are autoreactive undergoing apoptosis. Then there's B cells that reactivate their RAG genes to initiate light chain receptor editing. So both of these, one and two, are aspects of central tolerance, but then there's the third, which is when an autoreactive B cell escapes the bone marrow, but when that happens, they become energic to antigenic stimuli, and energy is the state of, as we spoke about earlier, is the state of being inactive. Uh, <clears throat> and here's some examples of failed self-tolerance. So type 1 diabetes would be an autoimmune disease, and it results from the immune system attacking insulin-creating pancreatic beta cells. Rheumatoid arthritis is caused by the immune system attacking the joints, which causes pain and inflammation in the host. And in severe cases, it can cause extreme swelling and even deformation. And then there's lupus. Now, lupus is an autoimmune disorder that results from the immune system attacking healthy tissue in the host. And this can cause fever, pain, and a rash amongst many other symptoms. And the effects can range from mild to severe. So this is what's very interesting about the immune system is that you can have a very detrimental health defects if this rigorous if the rigorous quote unquote training of the immune system doesn't come to pass or if there's maybe a mutation or a problem and we see here a list of three different autoimmune disorders but there's even more such as irritable bowel syndrome uh, that will <clears throat> cause tons of substantial damage to the host because there's something went wrong during maturation of the T cells, somehow these autoreactive cells got out of the thymus or out of the bone marrow and into the bloodstream and were able to circle the body and attack the host. And this can cause – what's really crazy about this though is that it, it can attack anything. The immune system could cause problems anywhere from the joints to attacking insulin and many other things.